marine biology was my passion when I was in college, but I grew up in Iowa and went to school in Ohio, and so moving out to Washington was just a real, you know, joy for me. I met Judy, I met Frank, her husband, and it started with a shared interest in music, and then gradually we learned that they had a passion for outdoor life and science in particular. And Judy had children, and the children had friends, and friends had neighbors, and I think we collected the first class that way. It was the summer of 1981, about 12 kids. The class was very, very dynamic, and Libby and I started exploring ideas for how to keep something like this going. And so we went to the Paulsbo Marine Science Center and we met a teacher who worked there. She said, well, you should apply for a scholarship. And they were $500 scholarships. And we both took home a form and we got $1,000 to start the Marine Science Center. The amount of research that we did for the $1,000 grant was to look at a Sears catalog and figure out that that would cover the cost of a Sears pump and the basic plumbing for a number of tanks. So that was fine, except that we had no building to put the plumbing equipment into. We had actually had our eye on that building back at the end of 1981. It hadn't been used since the Korean War, so as soon as we did actually become a nonprofit corporation, then wheels were turned and greased, and we went down to Olympia and advocated for ourselves as well. So we were able to get into the building. There were oyster mushrooms growing on the interior of the walls, but it, the park had no plan for it at all, and really it suited our purposes wonderfully because the flow underneath was great. The first thing we'd had to do was build some tanks, and both of our partners were carpenters, and both of them were involved in boat building. They totally knew how to do fiberglassing. And so the summer of 1982, Two was the summer that we opened, and our exhibit was something like four tanks and a couple of aquaria, and that was it. And it was by donation, we couldn't charge anything. I do remember just lots of people just sort of standing there staring at one little starfish in one little tank. <laughs> I decided to go back to school and get a certification to teach, and I was hired by Jim Kolb, who ran the, the Paulsbo Marine Science Center. We were actually working for the Educational Service District. You know, he was the director, and he set up a contract with Port Townsend Schools, you know, with my help, so that I could be teaching them. And so that's what got the regular program going in the Port Townsend Schools, using our Marine Science Center. Judy Demore and I just really clicked on putting together things that would work for our kids. So we would go out on that beautiful beach and do a seine and bring it into a little kiddie pool. And those kids, they just go crazy. It changes their view of the world from that point forward. In 1989, this legislature decided to put the money in for one FTE into the state parks budget, which was just like the most amazing thing that I could imagine. That changed everything. We ended up hiring Ann Murphy. She was able to really develop the administrative skills to really take it way forward. If I were to characterize our approach to work, I would say it was unleashed passion and creativity. We just went for it. We wanted our local kids to be very science literate, to have the skills to study the environment, and ultimately to be able to translate those skills into other things they were doing in school. Like they look like that, like this right here. Yeah. I need no more convincing after nearly 30 years of working with kids, adults too, that experiential learning is much more cellular and organic and long lasting. Teaching from a sort of abstract model just doesn't sink in to the depth and breadth of the bloodstream, like touching something with your own hands or picking it up and looking at it. Can I be luckier to be a public school teacher in this place where we have the Marine Science Center as a partner? Here we go. 
We opened the natural history exhibit to tell the story of the interconnection between land and sea and the dynamics that are always going on. When Hope died, the whole story around her contamination and the health of our waters, we saw an opportunity to tell Hope's story. We had volunteers from 12-year-old to certainly at least one person who was in his 80s. It was a fantasy project kind of from beginning to end. When we got that head on, when we got those flippers on, at that point, she's alive, she's swimming now. Marine Science Center has given so much of us a family in this community. In developing the volunteer program, Judy Friesen set a standard that was so wonderful. The volunteers really are the organization. They're the face of it, they're the ambassadors, they're the ones who bring their energy, their unique skills. Can't imagine it running without volunteers. And measurements, let's say 160 millimeters. Working with the AmeriCorps volunteers is great. It makes me more optimistic than I otherwise would be about the, the future of our environment, the future of the planet. These are going to go to the Washington State Department of Health Labs and they're going to be analyzing them for paralytic shellfish poisoning toxins. We pique people's scientific curiosity and we give them a platform to be engaged in science and influence policy. What did you find? Good Sudanesia. Some Sudanesia? All of these experiences that people have with us and putting them out there, helping them find information and bring information back and share it and interpret it and reflect on it all gets them thinking in that mindset of being citizens of the Salish Sea, which is what we really need for people to start conserving and thinking about how all of our actions as a region impact the health of the Salish Sea. Uh, I have one crab. Someday we like want to be fishologists, <laughs> maybe teach like the generations after us how to treat the earth and the animals. I learned a lot today. The Marine Science Center is the biggest gift, and it is sitting on that little gemstone of a beach at Fort Warden State Park. It's a miracle. Manifested. We're so lucky. Yeah.